Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Mo Money at the Movies, and I just watched Major League, the 1989 classic with Rick Vaughn, Jake Taylor, Roger Dorn, and Pedro Serrano. Rick Vaughn played by Charlie Sheen, and it starts out as any classic sports comedy does with the slow, dramatic music. As they go over the timeline of the Indians and the last time they won versus the current year it is. And I believe it was like 54 years or something like that. Rene Russo plays the ex-showgirl owner as the former owner passed away the previous offseason. And her goal is to move the team to Miami. To get out of Cleveland. She doesn't like Cleveland. She doesn't want to be there. And the attendance has to drop below 800,000. So she puts together a team. That's supposed to do so bad. She can finish in last place. She messes with the equipment. So on and so forth. But there's a funny scene. Where the executives are all. Piled around in the beginning. And one guy says. This is. Uh. This guy's not in his prime, and these guys never had a prime. And one executive goes, this guy's no longer with us, and they're like, cross him off then. And so that's her big plan. And then they get to training camp, training camp and there's Pedro, who wanted uh, religious freedom. His voodoo, he hits the fastball a ton, can't hit the curveball. And Roger Dorn is high-priced, but he's gotten lazy because he believes his own hype. Jake Taylor's the old wily veteran who is the on-field leader of the team. And Rick Wild Thing Vaughn is the up-and-coming rookie. And then, of course, there's Willie Mays Hayes, who has charisma out the yin-yang and is speedy as heck. Kind of thinks he's a hitter, like a car hitter. And Lou Brown, who's the coach, is the way he gets the job is how would you like to manage the Indians? He's like, oh, I don't know, Charlie. And he's let me think about it because he's selling tires. And he says, it's my kind of team, guys. It's my kind of team. And, of course, they're down for nothing on opening day. They bring Vaughn in. He throws 12 straight balls to load the bases. And then he throws a pitch that winds up being a home run. Hits the next guy, gets thrown out. And then, like I said, they're 15 and 24. She goes, that's bad, not bad enough. Then she starts taking things away like they're playing. They're flying in a storm on this old broken down plane. And Serrano has a moment where he's going to vomit. And Harris, Roger Harris, is like, he's not fooled. And it's just a hilarious movie. And then he gets to 60 and 61, about 120 games, 30 games left in the season. And uh, the GM comes out and basically says, you're doing a heck of a job this year with this team. and." The manager doesn't think so. And the GM says, well, you're expected to lose all these games. And then there's a love story in this as well with Jake and his actual lady. Because Jake was playing in Mexico and he was gone for like three, two years. And so he thinks it's a joke going back to the beginning of the movie that he's even being invited to this team. But he figures since he's here, he'd find his ex-girlfriend, Lynn, and just be like, you know what? i got to put my life back together. So he's trying and he's trying. And he's being shot down to the point where he goes to her, her favorite restaurant and he give, she gives him a fake phone number because she's on a date with a lawyer. And he goes to the library, <laughs> stalking her after he gets the fake phone number. 
and she they get into a loud arguing match because he say that a stewardess bet him that she had a better body than she did and he had to defend her honor which is an excuse for him getting cheating and she yelled in the library and then she wanted him to read books and he wouldn't do that and he offered to check it out now and then there's a plane issue where he decides that he's going to read Moby Dick and then he tails her to what he thinks is her place. It's the lawyer's place. The lawyer kind of makes fun of Jake at all, every chance because it's a real uppity class of people. And they're like, how much do you make? And he's like, I make the league minimum because they heard that baseball salaries are pretty good. And he was looking for a chance to stick it to Jake. And he's like, I thought this was Lynn's place. He says, it, it soon will be. And so, then they have another game where Jake spots his ex-girlfriend in the stands. And he's like, I figured you wanted to see me about something. And the funniest thing is he takes the club's bullpen car, which is the car they used to drive to the bullpen to get the pitchers. So that was quite hilarious as well. And, uh, yeah, so they end up spending the night together, and she leaves him there by himself, even though he thinks they've patched things up. And so they get the uh, usual montage of sports things, them winning to get close, and then Roger Dorn's wife finds him cheating on national TV, so she goes and sleeps with Wild Thing, which is really funny, because she doesn't tell him his, her name. He doesn't know who she is. And then, so, Jake Taylor, his big idea is to get uh, Vaughn out to the bullpen early so he doesn't have to deal with uh, Dorn, because Dorn knows. And so they get to a one-game playoff where they have to play the Chicago White Sox and Clue Haywood, who has been hammering uh, the Indians all year long. But before that, Lou, the, the manager, says, I'm going to go with Harris because he's had better luck against the Yankees, which is true. And there are a couple points where the White Sox almost score, but a couple of defensive plays are made. And it gets to the sixth inning. The White Sox hit a two-run home run. Dorn hits a, hits a single, I believe it was. Might have been a double. But anyway, Serrano comes up. And he's mad because he's like, Joe Boo, you don't help me now. Forget you, I'll do it myself. And he hits a two-run home run. And Harry Doyle, played by Bob Uecker, had the greatest reaction. The Indians have tied it at two, and welcome to the happy hunting grounds. And uh, so it's just really an awesome movie. And then Harris is still pitching in the ninth that he tied it to. He walks the guy and Clue Haywood comes up. And then Lou says to get Vaughn ready. And then Jake Taylor goes, you want Vaughn? And he's like, yeah, I got a hunch he's doing. And so Vaughn comes out. And then his first pitch is a fastball. It's 97, which is missed. And the next one is 99, which is also missed. And then 101, I guess, elevating his fastball every time. And if you're still here, drop a like on the video. That's all I ask. And also, uh, so the Indians come up in the bottom of the ninth because they're the home team. And... They get the outs quickly, and then Hayes comes up, beats out a ground ball to first, and he goes on to steal second after a swing and a miss by Jake. And uh, Jake decides to call a shot where the reliever for the White Sox gets upset, 
Uh, knocks Jake down with a fastball up and in. Jake calls a shot again. But this time he drops a bunt. And Willie Mays Hayes is rounding the bases as he started the run. And the White Sox weren't expecting the bunt. So the third baseman comes in. And Jake barely beats out the throw to first. And at that time, Willie is rounding third base. The first baseman sees it, throws it at the catcher. Willie makes the big slide. He's called safe. The Indians win the division and are headed to the playoffs. The big celebration happens where Harris and Serrano, with all their issues, hug it out. And then you have Dorn and Vaughn hugging it out, which is real funny because Dorn suddenly remembers that Vaughn took his wife for a night. And punches him out. And they're having a good old time. And Jake and Lynn, they patch it up. And that's how the movie ends. Again, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, may your ego come from a place that keeps you humble. I'm Mo Money. Uh, Mamba out.